My name is Scott Blake. I live in Omaha, Nebraska, and I make art with barcodes. This is my barcode Andy Warhol portrait made with 2,160 barcodes. I used the UPC barcodes from Campbell's soup cans that were part of Warhol's iconic screen prints. I even curved the barcodes to mimic the cylindrical shape of soup cans. I also created an augmented reality interface to go along with the portrait, so when a barcode is scanned, a video projector lights up the corresponding soup can and dumps virtual soup into a bowl. This is my barcode Marilyn Monroe portrait made with 1,944 barcodes. I used the UPC barcodes from DVDs of the 22 films in which the actress appeared. Each time a barcode is scanned, the video monitor plays a short clip from corresponding Marilyn Monroe films. Scan a barcode and Marilyn Monroe opens a door. Scan another barcode and she closes the door. This looping technique links all of her films, seamlessly shifting from black and white to color. I offset the barcode tiles in the portrait to add a wiggle in the mosaic inspired by the paintings of Gerhard Richter. The visual pattern accents Monroe's curly hair and round cheeks and is also used to reference her curvy body. There is a video projector behind the print so when a barcode is scanned, the projector highlights a precise column of barcodes. This is my QR code Amy Goodman portrait made with 2,304 unique QR codes that link to nine years of Democracy Now! videos. You can scan the QR codes with a smartphone and it will play a full hour-long episode of Democracy Now! on the palm of your hand. Amy Goodman is the host of Democracy Now!, which is an independent news program produced by Pacifica Radio. I admire Amy Goodman and hope that this portrait will make more people aware of Democracy Now! and become avid watchers much like myself. I added the radio stripe pattern to create an extra dimension in the portrait that mimics radio waves. Here is some of my art without barcodes. A health insurance company based in Omaha, Nebraska commissioned 22 local artists to decorate large O-letter forms. I responded to this ridiculous branding of my city by building a giant penis sculpture to violate the public art project. I documented my guerrilla performance art on YouTube, and my video received twice as many views than the official video released by the Omaha Chamber of Commerce. Even though my stunt was controversial, many of the participating artists appreciated the joke, and I continued to receive positive feedback from the creative community. This is my 9-11 flipbook, showing images of United Airlines Flight 175 crashing into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Accompanying the images are essays written by a wide range of participants, each expressing their personal experience of the September 11th attacks. The authors of the essays were asked to reflect on and respond to the flipbook itself. I am distributing the 9-11 flipbooks to encourage a constructive dialogue regarding the media's participation in sensationalizing the tragedy. To further illustrate my point, I recently conducted a media study of archive footage from September 11, 2001, counting the number of times major news networks showed the plane crashes, building collapses, and people falling from the towers. The BBC showed the plane crashing into the towers 240 times from 9 a.m. to midnight, roughly 16 times per hour. CNN showed the towers collapsing 161 times, or about once every five minutes. I believe the news media acted against peaceful society on 9-11 and terrorized the viewing public by showing those images over and over, giving power to the very people that wanted to frighten us. My passion is to make art that is visually stimulating and conceptually thought-provoking. Simultaneously pop and op, intellectual and personal, minimal and ocular, appropriated and original. I am inspired by optical illusions and brain puzzles, and I enjoy creating interactive work that feeds on audience participation. I also like to challenge copyright laws, and I get a kick out of downloading data from the internet, remixing it, and making it into something I can call my own. I am interested in subverting the status quo and strive to make art that is humorous, witty, and entertainingly tongue-in-cheek. Thank you for reviewing my application for the 2012 Skowhegan Residency Program.